Hello, my friends. Chris Parrish here with Chris Parrish Ministries in Florida, Winter Haven. I came down here about a week ago to embark on a new journey of uh, acts of kindness and uh, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got a few dollars in my pocket, and this is all I have in my life right now. And I'm all the way down in Florida. And life is still great, my friends. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a documentary. You'll hear from me soon again. Bye-bye. I love you, and God loves you. So the gator, the gator got you kicked out of the the nine month program. A year program. The year program. Yeah. It was a gator's fault. It is a gator's fault. We'll blame it on the gator. Okay. Do you have any weapons on you or anything like that? Can my partner cut you down real quick? No, I'm not got there's any kind of government. We should right, just turn around. They said, didn't you see the sign? The billboard. The sign's out there. Uh, yeah. Did you tell him you couldn't read? No. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up. They said you can do not feed the alligators, do not feed. So I'm in Lakeland, Florida, and I'll be going across this country and doing a weekly service and uh, out in the streets of America. And I'm, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but uh, I gave up my regular life to live with the homeless, to be that guy that's in a homeless shelter and uh, kind of filling that void there to where, you know, I know somebody's trying to make it that's in a bad situation, and I can be that person to kind of give them a little bit of hope and encouragement to go on and fight, like maybe pay their uh, rent for a week or two there, $7 a day. It's about a third of the people that's in these shelters that uh, have some serious mental I issues and a third that really don't care. And there's a third that is really trying hard doesn't I still focus on the other ones and pray for them and pray with them but uh, the ones that really are trying to get back out there and be productive in life is the ones I'm really uh, hitting with you okay partner you sure yeah no it's time now I'm good thank you let me make that bed for you. He's gonna walk home for the night anyway. He's gonna walk. He's gonna walk. Yeah, for the night. He's up all night. Yes. I go to the bathroom, he's walking around. Yes, he's walking around. Yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with that. He don't cause no problems. No, it's not a problem. I just know that I noticed that most of the He's a pacer. When I get up. But here's an update on Mr. Allen. I'm uh, right behind him, making sure he gets the turning point. It's an agency here in Bradenton, about two blocks, three blocks down and uh, to get him some assistance, uh, some veterans assistance. They have uh, continental breakfast this morning. They have lunch, 10 to two, free showers, and he can get some clothing. Uh, so uh, I'm keeping an eye on him, make sure nothing happens to him while he goes there. And uh, try and stay uh, far back behind him. So, he doesn't get uh, nervous or anything. So, uh, yeah, so I just want to update everybody that was concerned about Mr. Allen, a Marine uh, veteran, and has nobody, no one. No uh, mom is in Greece, and no no siblings, no kids, and, and he just got some health issues and some mental issues, of course, being in a war like that. You know, I'm sure he saw some ugly things there but bless his heart he's he's doing it and i keep cheering him on i was just beside him earlier telling him that i'm cheering him on in the name of jesus
I'm gonna make sure he gets down there and gets what he needs and uh, you know and protect him because I'll tell you what anybody that tries to jump on him they're gonna have a fight on their hands in Jesus name I ain't gonna let that happen to him my heart breaks for this guy he sleeps uh, on the bunk next to me all night long and I pray for him all night long and keep an eye on him me and a couple of other guys here we said if anybody bothers you mr. Allen you let us know because sometimes they'll pick on a guy like that and uh, try to take whatever he's got but uh, this right here you know makes you sad at Christmas time but I am so I look <clears throat> there must there was a reason why uh, I would left to Lakeland to go to Bradenton. Now I know why. Just now I know why. God sent me over here. Make sure uh, one of his child of God, one of his guys that protect the freedom of this country. Praise the Lord. So keep him in your prayers that I'm going to see him through today and uh, make sure he gets a, a turning point is supposed to be like it's called one stop turning point it's a facility that's open right now it's like two blocks down we'll be there in about 10 minutes and um, they have all kinds of services there and i hear it's uh for veterans it's just great so i did a little bit of homework and i told him this morning to get up let's go we're going to go to turning point and he mumbled a little bit of course but i said you can do it buddy and uh, he's just uh, depressed, lonely. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have a tomorrow night. And we're going to have, I'm going to have a nice little uh, snacky snacks in our room, and uh, get him a present or something small to wrap up so he can open it up. And. Uh, So, uh, as you can see, he's, I'm just keeping an eye on him, but I'm gonna get him a present or two and let him open them up and uh, make him feel like he, make him feel like he's uh, special, which he is. He matters, he's important, he's a child of God, just like all of us. We all have a story, no story's greater than another one. But I'm gonna see this guy through. I know this is why God called me over here at Bradenton riding my bike 63 miles to pump this guy up to get going. Come on, Mr. Allen, let's go. Brother, you got it. On the mornings like this, there's always pe homeless people on this stretch of road that uh, are uh, asking for money, dollar, or cigarettes or something. So, you know, somebody like him, if he don't have anything, they may get it mad and knock him out. That ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen my watch, I'll tell you that right now. Come on, brother Allen, let's go. I'll make sure you get there, okay? All right. You got this, brother. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Chris. I'm the travel evangelist. Uh -huh. Can I pray with you? Yeah. What's your name? Sherry. Sherry, Lord Jesus, Holy God, I pray to you uh, on this day here in uh, Bradenton, Florida, that uh, Sherry, is it Sherry? Yeah. Sherry, that you, you bless Sherry and you protect her as she travels this journey and uh, allow somebody to come in her path today, tomorrow, next week, or next month. They give her some kind of a direction where to go, where to get fed, and where to get shelter. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's your name? Amina. Huh? Amina. Amina? There's some uh, noodles? Yeah. And you too. My name's Chris, okay? When's the last time you ate? Like, I had, um... Earlier today? Yeah. Are you staying here? I'm going to stay for the night. Okay. Well, a bunch of two bowls and some noodles there. Okay, and also brought you uh, a Salisbury steak 
uh, dinner you can have later or a ten dollar gift card for you for today or whenever okay well thank you may god bless you all right here you go partner merry christmas there's some uh fudge here cookies and fudge here partner merry christmas Planting the seeds of the gospel down here across America. That's my calling. And uh, praise the Lord. We've done over 50 kinds of acting, uh, kindness of uh, good things for people. And uh, whoa. I hit that pole. Yep. Sometimes I find them and sometimes I don't. But they're always in my prayers and thoughts. But we've done over 50, 50 uh, acts of kindness so far. We'll be coming to a city near you here in the next year. And I'm going to Tucson, Arizona, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, sorry, I'm trying to pay attention to what's around me right now, because you got to be careful. I'm leaving January 15th to go to Phoenix, Arizona to the Awakening 2020 movement. They asked me to join them, 50,000 plus believers there. And uh, my calling is to go and live with the homeless. I don't have to, but this is my calling. I can up and leave anytime I want, but these are God's children, veterans, kids. Um, a lot of people are just a two to three paycheck away from being homeless. Uh, <clears throat> I'm out here at five o'clock in the morning every morning looking for uh, somebody in distress to make them feel important, that they matter, that they're a child of God and pray with them and ask them if they uh, have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior winning one soul at a time just like Jesus left his 99 for that one and uh, rather it be a cup of coffee or sitting down talking to him chatting with him and laughing with him and um, that's what we do if you want to partner up with this ministry go to www.chrisparishministry.org and uh, you can make your donation there as little as five dollars two dollars goes a long way because I actually live with them. So this for me to run this ministry is a very minimal cost. And we have impact on people's lives every day, all day long. But you're getting a first glimpse look at what I do. I go down one side of the main street in the back alleys. And uh, usually I'll, I'll find a couple of them. But, uh, it's raining here, so they made. Uh, they knew they probably were aware that it was going to rain all night last night, and they probably went and took a shelter somewhere. Because usually I'll catch them sleeping up next to a building. And uh, this is uh, America at its core. I'm doing a documentary coming out next fall, 2020. I pray. That's me. I pray that the stars of heaven falls up on you and your family and your friends and surround you with grace and bless you this Christmas season and in the coming year of 2020 because it's going to be such a year of awakening and of revival that the hand of God is going to be up on it and it's going to be such a movement. Praise the Lord. You guys have a good weekend. Praise Jesus. And always remember you're beautiful, you're wonderful, and you're a champion, you're a child of God. So go live your dreams. Write that story. Don't let anybody else hold that pen. It's your pen. I know I need to be here. It, I know. Look, I just got off the bus and we've been singing hymns on the bus. Now, how many people do that? So, uh, you know, I, I go out in the morning at 5 a.m. I walk the streets, the alleys, and look for homeless people and talk to them and pray with them and tell them that, hey, you know, I'm trying to make their at least... 15, 30 minutes of their day somewhat happy. 
so it's not that I am destitute. Yes and no. I can leave this place and go. I can go live. You know, I've already got three jobs I've turned down. And it's all documented. So I'm doing a documentary. It's called America at its Core, coming out in summer of 2020. I have a film editor back in Indiana. I have an IT guy, and I have a social media person. It's all doing the stuff for free. It's putting the pieces together, because we know this is going to be big. We're doing a documentary at the core of America. And what I witnessed today, I knew it was going to happen. I know. I've been around. Look, I was at McDonald's. If you didn't see the video today, I was at McDonald's today. And um, and there was uh, today was the day I was going to go around. Each day I'm doing something I'd like a homeless person would do. So to be like a homeless, you got to live with the homeless. You just look. There's a lot of preachers and pastors who will go in the homeless shelter and preach and live and live and leave and go back to their four thousand square foot home. And they think they know how homeless people live. That no, people go to prisons. I know pastors up there in Anderson goes to prisons all over the country. They go in there and preach. Mm, you gotta live with them. You gotta do everything they do every day. You gotta think like them. You gotta act like them. There's a code. Believe it or not, there's a code. Me and Jerry Martin talked about this the other night because he's a fireman. He's worried to death about me. They're, the people that I'm in contact with that uh, are giving to support this ministry, they are seeing firsthand of the footage, not all of it, but some of the footage of what I'm recording or videoing. So how the core of America is. But I was at McDonald's and there's five senior elder guys sitting around like they always do McDonald's, drinking coffee and talking. I approached the five and asked him, told them who I was, gave them my business card. You know, tell them I got a laptop. How many people got a laptop and camera with them? Tell them was none. But I was just telling them I was going to do. A, I'm doing a documentary, but I'm living like this. So I'm going to go around the country and da 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 da. da. Well, okay, okay. Well, I said if you got a few dollars in your pocket, would you like to donate it uh, for this cause? So. Uh, you know, I can do acts of kindness there in the homeless shelter. Like, you know, I got a buddy here that he don't know if he's going to be staying here tomorrow. But look, cost seven dollars a day to stay here. I'm not going to let this dude go back on the street and live. He's a good dude. He's got a great spirit. Nope, that ain't going to happen. Look, I told him I was going to go to the woods next week where they, you know they live outside. They have a little community, and I got to get me a sleeping bag. Now I can go buy one. But my point is this, you're going, you'll eventually see the raw footage of this, the real deal. They will not give none. Matter of fact, they mocked me when I walked away. They said, well, you better get a sleeping buddy. Five elderly people in this country. And when I put that, you know, that's actually a scripture today that I put on there. You better listen. I hope you're listening. When I put uh, your lips, you serve me with your lips. But your heart is hard. Mark 7, 6. Jesus says, You hypocrites, as is written in Isaiah, These people honor me with their lips, but not with their hearts for me. In Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord says, The Lord says, get this, the Lord says, These people come, come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. Wow. That's what America is all about. I'm telling you that right now. Whoop, I've been there. I have done it. I'm not saying I've never you know, been perfect. I sin every day. I'm a sinner. But I'm telling you, the core, that's the problem with America. We'll go to church on a Sunday and use our lips to praise Him. But in the other day, we're walking away from the less fortunate people. We, you, seriously. What do you think is going to happen when Jesus comes back? He's throwing the goats to the left and the sheeps to the right. And he's going to tell the tell them, look, for the sheep, for when I was naked, you clothed me. For when I was homeless, you gave me shelter. For when I was thirsty, you offered me something to drink. For when I was in prison, you came and visit me. Hmm. I don't, I, I'm not forced to be here. Look, I'm in an alley. This is where I'm supposed to be by God's calling. I trust his, I look, I don't question my journey. He got, he, he, uh, he is in control of it. I can pick this phone up anytime. 
and fly it back to Indiana, but I'm not going to do that. I can pick this phone up right now. I know Mr. Martin will get me a place to stay at. He's already reassured me that, but I don't want that. This country needs help. We need a sixth revival, and it's happening in 2020. I, I know I've talked to a lot of people that are that have watched these videos that has always complained to me over the years that something needs to be done in this country. But yet you don't want to give five, ten, twenty dollars to my ministry. Why? Why is that? Is it because I got a conviction? I'm a felon? I'm a thief? Well look, hey, get over it, Skippy. Get over it. Next to Jesus on the right side, left side was two thieves. Two. One mocked him. The other one proclaimed him. So, look, I'll, I, I told Jerry Martin, other nine people, don't give me no more money. I want new money. It only costs me about uh, $100 a week to live here, to live in the shelter and to uh, do the acts of kindness. It's a missionary. You, you, the money is making people happy. I'm sleeping on the floor in a chapel. Jerry Martin, Jerry Martin is the only one to have seen some of the bad things because I won't show it to other uh, people, which are mostly ladies, friends of mine, that uh, they'll probably, probably come down here and come get me and pull me out of here. Because it's, look, a lot of you guys going to hang out here. I can. I know how to roll with these people. It's a different, different community. This can be your, this ministry can be your missionary. Nothing but hanging out. Drugs, whatever you want to call it. In, in front of the Salvation Army shelter house every night. Hallelujah! Look, Chris Parrish was joined, joined me at the core ministry and Beat the Street Ministries. Not the Back Street Boys, but Beat the Street Ministries. Look, I'm just right. Look, I went panhandling today. That didn't work out so good. I got cussed at, flipped off, and no response, and a lot of other bad stuff. But I only got 50 cents. I was up there for three hours, 50 cents. So it's like, okay, I'm done with that. I'm gonna go out and get some how uh, cheer. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Watch this. You're like, okay. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Amen. Hey folks, you guys have a nice Christmas. Merry Christmas. The king was king is born. Remember that. <laughs> look, I'm driving around. Look what I'm, look what I'm riding on. Let me get it from. Hey, let me tell you something. Merry Christmas. Jesus loves you. All right, brother. Hey, can I tell you something? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, folks. Jesus loves you. That's what I call spreading a holiday cheer when you're you look like this. Look. And looks like this on a bike. Merry Christmas, folks! <laughs> Looking at me like some homeless guy riding his bike around with bags all over his uh, bike. Telling us, I don't think they've ever seen this or heard this. They look at me like, oh my god. Sir, guess what? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you and your family. Man, Merry Christmas. <laughs> the King lives. Hallelujah. And we need to spread this around all everywhere. In the United States, every state. Just go around and just tell everybody. You guys have a nice Christmas. Jesus lives. Amen, that's right. You go. Might be I, I might be doing this two bits. What was it? Two bits. 
two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar, all for Jesus, came up and hollered. Yeah, I was out panhandling today because uh, I'm a little short on, not short on funds, but uh, just trying to generate some more uh, funds for the ministry for some. Man, can I just tell you Merry Christmas? <laughs> See, you got a smile on her face. <laughs> um, and, uh, look, <clears throat> man, whew, I was in the pit. People was looking at me, would not respond. I had a sign that said, Honk for Jesus. Another one said, taking donations, tribal evangelists. I got 50 cents in three hours. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to stand there no more. God, let's go out and give people some hollow Christmas cheer. Not holiday. I almost said that word. Uh, no, sorry. I hear it all the time around here. I people it's like Merry Christmas. Oh, happy holidays. No, Merry Christmas. That's what it's all about. That's how I wrote. When you support this ministry, either financial. Hey folks, you guys have a Merry Christmas. Look at that smile I got. You're probably wondering, there's a guy that don't have anything. And he's out spreading whole, uh, Christmas cheer. I almost said that word again. I don't like saying that word. Why? Mm. Christmas cheer. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas cheer. Ma'am, you have a nice Christmas. Merry Christmas, okay? Yeah. Merry Christmas, ma'am. Maybe Merry Christmas. See that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They probably wonder why. Somebody like me, because they don't know who I am. You know? There's a doggy! Merry Christmas, doggy. On Christmas Eve 2019, searching for the lost, the homeless, up underneath of a bridge. As you can tell, I think they're celebrating. A lot of them will collect the plans and turn them in. This is underneath of an interstate. Or fast. Actually, this is where they get out of the weather. Can you want? If you cut up the chaos in your life and the phone and the junk, you'll realize that there's a lot of blessings around you, and they'll come in due time. It's not our time. It's, he has no time. He's outside the time. So, you know, if it comes tomorrow, month. Six years from now, I waited seven years on the first one. I waited 10 years on this one. I've been out for 10 years out of prison thinking I knew something I was going to do was going to be big. And even the judge, Judge McKinley, when he sends me on April 29, 2009, I think it was, he told me, you're going to do something big, Mr. Parrish. I feel it, you're going to do something big. And I knew it too. I'd just been uh, uh, traveling around in life for the last 10 years, waiting on the move. And finally, it was uh, February of this year, uh, almost 10 months ago, that God said move, and I moved. I left. Left and started working on things this summer, did a revival in Anderson, and God said move to Florida. Go down there to this group. I moved. And here I am, and I'm going to Arizona, and I'm flying to Arizona, and we're making a difference in people's lives. It's all because of the name of Jesus, period. People might say, you're Jesus freak. Okay, all right, amen. This guy's been laid up. He's been in an accident. And I feel sorry for him, of course. And uh, I'm fixing him some noodles and taking him some crackers and peanut butter, but you're gonna see him. So just hold on a second, give me a second. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. You get it, I know it's kind of little, you know what, but you gotta stay with me on this. This is what this minister does. No one will help him. Hey buddy. Oh, okay. I'll bring you sit at this table. I just talked to him. What's your name? My name is Kenny. Kenny? Yeah. I brought you some crackers and um, some. Uh, here. 
Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll tear this open for you. I don't, yeah, but I can't. I know you can. The, uh, yeah, I got an orange. When was the last time you ate? Yesterday? Yeah. Can I pray for you first? If you would like to. Yeah. Kenny, right? Yes, sir. Lord Jesus, I come to you with Kenny on his behalf and that uh, heal him and surround him with your grace and your love and encourage the people to come around him to help him out as he travels through his journey. In Jesus' name, holy name, I pray. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, the situation uh, that I encounter every day and to help people out and do acts of kindness. A guy has an eight cents yesterday and uh, he told me that he was on a, a, a moped and somebody uh, uh, cut him off a car and he had, uh, pulled off the moped. But I noticed yesterday that he gave some, uh, which was a mistake, he gave a, uh, hope you can hear me, he gave a girl some money to go down to the store to go get some uh, food and she never made it back. So I was talking to him this morning on the porch. I could tell he's frustrated and I asked him if he needs something to eat. He said, well, that would be nice. So you know how hard it is to eat when you only got one arm. Try to fix you something and be in a lot of pain. So I just fixed him some beef and noodles and gave him a little jar of peanut butter and some crackers and a Pepsi. So. I'll do him for a while, but that's what we do here, and uh, this what this ministry does is help people along get back on their feet and feel a little bit better about themselves. So, New Year's uh, 2020 start off with uh, helping people out. Wow. It's taking me longer because I stopped at a few homeless uh, camps that I seen off the road. There's a stretch of road that I, I can tell where they're uh, setting up shop and I can always investigate to figure out if uh, they've been there recently or not. And uh, But uh, no one was there. They were always obviously gone for the day. Because they usually leave during the day and they come back at night. But there was probably, I took pictures of two or three of them, but there was probably at least I don't know, 25, 30 different camps on a probably about a five or two, seven mile stretch of this main road. It was like, wow, a lot of them out here. But I got to go up that. It looks, it's a, it looks to a little hill to you, but I've been going about 50 miles already in the last two days, about 20, probably 20, 20, 18, 20 miles today. And while I'm looking out, I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to make it, or do I get a guy get off? I don't even know if I'm going to stop at Lakeland. I may just go on through to Orlando, which will take me two days. I just got this feeling I need to go to Orlando. God's telling me I need to get over there. There's something going on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here I am traveling down the uh, uh, road here on 92. I think it's 92 heading eastbound. Rolling down eastbound. How can this be, Christy? Look, I'm riding my bike on 92 east of Lakeland, heading toward Orlando. Been gone since about 8.30 this morning. But to my surprise, Christy, to my surprise, laying in a ditch is my good old friend, and I had to pick him up. Snoopy! The Red Baron! He was laying in a ditch. How did somebody throw him out of a window car? That is crazy. So I picked him up. How you doing? Doing just fine. He's red. No, I'm okay, brother. Okay. Hey, you have a great day, all right? Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Amen, brother. How could uh, anybody, Monty Coons, how could anybody throw Snoopy out? So I stopped and picked him up, and he's my uh, co-pilot co here. And uh, he's giving me directions, and now he's smiling because he's got out of that dirty ditch with his nose buried in it. So he's happy as a camper. Snoopy, of all things, who would throw Snoopy out in a ditch? What is this world coming to? It is crazy. Snoopy, I'm heading eastbound now uh, on 92, 
and uh, I've been praying for healing for my friend Angela first uh, Peter 224 by him wounds she is healed and that's the same verse I uh, stood on back when I had my aneurysm blood clot a uh, infection in my large intestine and a tumor on my kidney all at the same time it was crazy that that uh, week and I stood on that verse every day all day long and uh, they was telling me that the cancer uh, the tumor was uh, rooted and that it would be coming back cancerous not get anything done for a year because I had an aneurysm should have died from that but praise the Lord I didn't I was healed and uh, comes the ambulance it looks like and uh, after a year they took that tumor out and I was healed it, it was cancerous but it didn't spread so I'm standing on that verse for my friend Angela uh, in the mighty name of Jesus that she's going to be healed uh, from her body Snoopy and I just want to tell you, you guys have a great day today and pray for Angela first Peter 224 by his wounds she is healed as I'm peddling peddling it on 92 east i'm standing on that verse for healing in jesus name amen you guys have a great day god bless you snoopy's happy now he's uh sitting uh comfortably and uh, enjoying the sun rays today here in uh florida in jesus name amen you guys have a good day bye bye look at that over there isn't that beautiful i'm about uh 10 miles Look, the best thing about going going up on the bridge, I got to get off my bike and walk. But when I get to the top of it, baby, it's all the way down. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Blake Clayton, what's up, my man? My poor partner, Blake Clayton, is in the house. Tony Pete's in the house. I'm about seven miles, seven and a half miles from Tampa. I've done pretty good today because I cut my load down. These are my bags. That's my backpack right there. I got a new backpack from the other place I was staying that they gave to me free. I just got my, all my personal information in. I, I keep that close, very close to me. And here's a, a smaller backpack, but I'm going to condense these the other two and just carry two. But uh, I was carrying a lot, and then it was like, man, I gotta get rid of some of this stuff. It's, it's uh, low. But I've done uh, about uh, 20, no, I've done 36, 34 miles today on my bike. And uh, she's tired. She told me she wants to stop and rest. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know where I'm at. I know I'm just seven and a half miles out of Tampa on 40, I think 41. I took 41 all the way in. I did the bike route. It says it should have only took me four hours. Look, I don't know who's riding what bike or is it them professionals. I can't do it in no four hours. I'd be lucky to do it in, let's see, I left at 11.30, I think, 12.30, 1.32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 30, uh, probably about seven or eight hours it'll take me. There's no way I could do it in three, three and a half hours. But we did our job here at uh, where I was at last time with Mr. Allen. We got him safe and sound. And on to Tampa I go. On to Tampa I go and then I'm heading to Orlando doing a one, two, three, a four city tour in uh, Florida. And uh, doing a documentary on the homeless and at the core of America. And the last place I was at was off the chain. And I mean off the chain. Drugs infested. It was bad. And I'm grading each place that I go to on a scale of one to four. And I'm gonna put that in a documentary on safety, cleanliness, programs, things like that. But uh, Jackie's watching Jerry rolling. Yes, Jerry, that's the St. Christopher. Bree, cousin, love you. Maple, I'm being careful. 
Yeah, the last uh, place I stayed at, a homeless guy got ran over, got killed. They just, uh, that's a trend right now, believe it or not. That people are, uh, they don't want the homeless around. They uh, are uh, beating them up or killing them. Throwing them in the ocean. They had two in the bay, uh, I think a month ago, down where I was at. You know, we've done a lot of great things here and there's so much more to go. As soon as we keep going and growing, the network gets bigger and people, uh, you know, the financial part of it start getting bigger and we can do a lot of bigger bigger things uh, for uh, our friends, our veterans, our homeless friends and be able to hopefully, we will one day be able to get, you know, take somebody out like Dorothy there at uh, Tampa and be able to take her out and get, get her a, a month's rent somewhere and get her back on her feet uh, quickly like that. He, you know, we did a, a uh, announcement that I needed $42 for her to get off the street. She was sleeping in an alley. And uh, within seven minutes, uh, Kimberly sent the money and uh, she had it in her hand. And within five, six days, she reunited with her family. I gave her one of my old phones that I've been carrying around for a year. She reunited with her family and she texted me today and she's great, happy as a lark. Things are going good for her, so praise the Lord that uh, that's what Direct uh, Impact Ministries all pal. As soon as uh, the money is in uh, my account, then it goes straight, straight to them. Don't go through this hoop, this hoop, this hoop. It goes straight to them. So. It's anywhere between whatever you give, it's anywhere between probably 94 to 96% of the whole money goes to them. Very little of it goes to me. I usually try to hustle it out there for me to cover my expenses, or I have a couple of people out there that I can call on to send me money. That's all they're designated for is to uh, make sure I'm covered and I'm okay. So, uh, other than that, it's usually anywhere from 94 to 96, 97% of the money that you send in goes uh, straight to whoever, rather it be uh, paying for rent, uh, bus tickets, uh, gift cards, uh, so many. Well, I'm here at the library here in uh, Lakeland, Florida, and uh, met uh, Diana and Cedric. This is Cedric right here. Say hi. Say hi to everybody out there. Hi. You're live on Facebook, Cedric. And, but anyways, here's Diana. Hi, Hi Diana. And um, we were sitting there in the library, and we had a general conversation yeah. about uh, the Lord, and and another gentleman jumped in, and uh, and we were having a conversation, general conversation, and it led into um, what I do and what she does and uh, her uh, issues and things going on, like we all have. And we were talking about the Lord, and another gentleman jumped in. You, you could feel, uh, we all had chills, because we had the uh, yes. spirit of the Lord there, there in the library. Yes. And matter of fact, the librarian told us to be quiet in there, and we said, we ain't going to be quiet, we're talking about Jesus. <laughs> no, you are not going to be quiet. Amen, right, girl? Amen. But anyways, I'm getting ready, she's getting ready to take me to uh, Wally World, Walmart, and uh, we are going to spend $100 on her for groceries because she's in need for some groceries. And the spirit of the Lord led me into just telling her, let's go to the grocery store. And, and she needed some food and she started breaking down and crying in there and bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, we're going to Walmart, do a little shopping. And I may just take this young man out to McDonald's if he likes McDonald's. And but look at that <laughs> smile, give him a smile there. See that smile? Take him to McDonald's and give him a cheeseburger or a double. What's your favorite sandwich? Uh, cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Happy Meal? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, yeah you'll get a Happy Meal, maybe a couple of them. So we're on our way to Walmart and uh, going to uh, fill the freezer up at Diane's house. Ooh, thank you, direct God. In, uh, direct Impact Ministry. Praise the Lord amen. and amen. Hey, you guys have a great day. Always remember, Jesus is Lord in your life and great things can happen if you just believe and pray and praise yes, Him. Yes, and uh, uh, just have faith and step out there outside your comfort zone and go for it and be honest and be tell people how you feel and what's going on in your life you just never know who might be sitting across from you yes. in Jesus name I just met a, I just got a new friend in my life and another friend so I got gang true today in Jesus name you guys have a great day and we're gonna go grocery shopping in Jesus name $100 today in grocery shopping bye bye Hey, Crystal Parish, how are you doing? This is Mantra Jefferson, the father of Cedric and the husband of Diana Jefferson. Hey, Chris. Um, I want to thank you and give you a big God blessing. And you don't know how much you've been a blessing. And I thank you again. I gotta hurry up and get to the shelter by six, or I'm gonna be in big trouble. Big trouble, but when when the good Lord calls to do something, you gotta do it. You gotta jump out there and do it. Even if that means I get in some big trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. I'm heading back to the shelter. Just got done with Miss Diane and her boys, and went to Wally World, Walmart. Uh, spent a hundred and thirty dollars. How you doing? Hundred thirty dollars on. Where's everybody at? Not the booyah. Okay, man. Jesus lives. But oh, I got one before there, or two or three. Oh, uh, praise the Lord. Jesus loves you. All right, amen. Way to go. Hallelujah. See, that's all it takes. Just go around telling people, hey, Jesus loves you. But I met Diane there at the library. And she actually, she came to me. And we started talking, and another gentleman jumped in on the conversation. And we had the Spirit of the Lord among the three of us. We had chills. And uh, the librarian was uh, told us to be quiet in there. And I said, well, we ain't going to be quiet. You know, it don't work that way, pal. Uh, we're talking about Jesus. We don't have to be quiet. Thank That's what's wrong with the world. That's what's wrong with our country. Everybody wants to be quiet about it. How y'all doing? Praise the Lord. I, I could feel that uh, she had some uh, distress in her life and told her she needed some groceries and she started crying there. And I said, look, come on, let's go to Walmart. Spend $100 on you. Well, we end up in her little boy took him to McDonald's, got him a Happy Meal, and got her a cheeseburger, and got me a cheeseburger, but don't tell nobody. So, here we are, January 15th, tomorrow 16th, is it? Yep, the 15th, 45 days, just about 45 days, 46 days, been in Florida, three city outreach uh, for the people of uh, Lakeland, Bradenton, and Tampa. And uh, we've done some remarkable things here. Over 400 acts of kindness, over uh, 500 miles on the bike. I'm in great shape, I feel great. And uh, met a lot of different people along the way. Tomorrow, uh, Mr. Chris Wallace is picking me up at 1 p.m. here in Lakeland and taking me to Orlando Airport. My flight don't leave till 6.05 tomorrow evening. I land in... Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, around 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. or 9, I don't know, but I'm there for a couple hours, layover, and then I fly into Phoenix. I get there like at 2 a.m. Friday morning, 2 a.m. So I'll probably hunker there at the airport, hunker down at the airport, and head over to Sun Devil Stadium, which a bus can run me there, 
and it's a uh, uh, short distance away. And um, sorry about that, I was watching something. And um, I'm going to help set up Friday evening all the way to who knows, midnight, one, two, three in the morning. I probably won't sleep. And Saturday, it's uh, Awakening 2020. Kanye West is in the house. Lou uh, is in the house. Cindy Jacobs in the house. There's so many great speakers. And, and there's going to be 65,000 plus there in there, sold out plus people outside. It's going to be a beautiful day, sunshine. The Lord's going to be there. There's going to be breakthrough, healing, and restoration. And I'll be Facebook Live all day uh, there at uh, Sun Devil Stadium. And then I'll be heading, take a couple of days off there and I'll probably head to San Diego, California. Uh, then following week, next week, be next week. Wow. And then uh, going to Los Angeles. And then from there, I haven't figured that out yet. I need to pray about it, figure out where I'm going. But uh, San Diego and Los Angeles are the uh, two worst place in America by numbers and location. I mean, there's a place called Skid Row. I've been researching it, and it's pretty bad there. <clears throat> and we need to fix it. We need to fix this problem. But uh, we've done over 400 acts of kindness here in Florida between three uh, cities Lakeland and Bradenton and Tampa and change uh, people's lives hey Lisa I hope you're feeling better been praying for you and um, we got a lot more to do it's real help real help at the ground zero at the core of America and uh, we made some diff difference in people's lives we really have and with your help your financial help and the people that are praying uh, we spread the gospel, the love of the gospel throughout uh, Florida here. And have you seen some of my posts? If I would have had Snoopy on tonight, <clears throat> but he's tired. He's in there laying in bed. Oh, by the way, look what happened tonight. So uh, let me tell you, my grandparents raised me up right and my mom, okay? And my dad and my uncles and my cousins. But... Uh, we're in there and the place is packed and I'm in a chapel and there's a bunch of us in there and they are our mats, which we sleep on a mat on the floor. Well, there's this guy there I call OG, which means old gangster. That's a different kind of talk around here. <clears throat> He's 77 years old. He has no mat. And he, I gave up my mat so he could have a mat tonight and praise the Lord because no one else volunteered their mat to give to this old man and I gave him mine I'm sleeping on the hard cement floor tonight I said hey OG look I've been praying for you and I've been uh, talking to you since I've been in Florida you're not going to sleep on this hard floor you're going to have my mat he didn't want to take it I said no OG I'm, this is my last night here man it would be an honor to give you my mat I'll sleep on the hard, uh, the hard floor I'm 55 years old He'll be okay. I said, plus, I'll be on the plane tomorrow and I can sleep all the way through that. So, he's happy. Another act of kindness we're doing here in Florida. We're doing them all the way up to the last hour, the last minute I leave here in Florida. I haven't done the raw numbers yet, but it's uh, quite a bit of money we spent here. I mean, from Barbara Parish, how you doing? It's from... Uh, Paying for food, paying for rental, uh, stay at the shelters, they're not free. You have to pay every night, anywhere from 7 to $15 a night. Sometimes they give you three nights free or a week free. But uh, uh, to uh, buying gas for somebody, paying for laundry, to gift cards, to um, uh, so much. Uh, Bus tickets, a lot of bus tickets, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, some people I will give five, ten dollars to cash uh, to them. I know their, you know, their spirit, their, their uh, drive, their determination, need some money. A lot of uh, maple, send maple, my cousins sent Christmas down here uh, for everybody in Lakeland. They had a present, each one had a present, and. Uh, bless her my cousin and let's see what else she baked cookies and fudge and all that stuff so it was a yummy time 
to a lot of things, to personal hygiene, to making sure veterans got to their appointments, to uh, resumes, to uh, mock interviews, to just spreading the word, uh, praying with people. But uh, you know, I kind of I'm, I'm excited about all the things that uh, went on, but I'm also uh, carrying a little bit of a heavy heart, and it's because. So many people are missing out. So many people are missing out on the uh, joy and the uh, love and the peace because I had so many people turn their heads. So many people flip me off. So many people chastise me. So many people cuss me out. You know, when you go up to them, tell them that Jesus loves them and look at me or uh, mock me or, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, really sad. There's only one person to give the praise and glory to, it's Jesus Christ. And there's more to come, my friend, more to come. Something big is going to happen here down the road, you wait and see. And uh, I'm going in there. You guys have a good night. Love you. Always remember, I'm here for you. And God has always been there and will be there for you. But uh, yeah, so uh, good news is my plane just got here and it's departing here at Orlando at 640, heading to uh, Texas, um, somewhere in Texas. And then I got a two hour delay there and then heading to Phoenix, Arizona. And I'll be there about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning at Phoenix. And I'm gonna head right straight over to the uh, Sun Devil Stadium there in uh, Phoenix. Probably take a bus over there or hitchhike or walk or something because it's not that far. So, uh, great news, we're here at the airport. And by the way, uh, Snoopy wants to say hi. He's been in big trouble today. Big trouble. He's in timeout right now. All he wants to do is run around in this airport and find something to get himself in trouble. I gotta keep him tame. Ain't that right, Snoopy? Look. He's happy. Found him in a ditch between Tampa and Lakeland. And now he's going on the jet. I hope he just don't uh, do anything crazy in the jet. You know how that is today in today's world. So, But hope everybody's doing good. Janet, how you doing? Harold, how you doing? Tracy, how you doing? Tom Sands, how you doing? But uh, I'm uh, excited about going to Phoenix. 65,000 people there tomorrow. And Kanye West is in the house, and I'll be volunteering and doing a bunch of other things there.